Hello and welcome to this episode of T-Tech. Today we're going to set up the Nginx web server on NetBSD. So I've already went ahead and performed an installation of NetBSD without X11. So do make sure you have that uh, set up before you follow along. And uh, we're going to log in here as root. And <clears throat> what you want to make sure of is that you have set a static IP address on your interface either IPv4 or 6, that doesn't matter. You want to make sure as well that you have a default route out to the internet. And thirdly, make sure you have a DNS server, okay? So we have all of those things, and you want to make sure there with your rcconf that you have those in there. And let's do a ping just to check that everything is working. All right, we're good to go. So the first thing we want to do, um, also make sure you've installed the package system, the binary packages. We're going to do package in update, and this will get us our up-to-date list. So now we'll do package, let me clear the screen, package in search, engine, nginx. And from here, we should get two options in one second. It's taking a little bit. Uh, the Nginx 119 and the 118. Um, either of those should work okay, but we're going to install the Nginx-1.18.0 NB2. All right. Um, go ahead with that installation and accept the prompt there. Okay, after this is installed, and at least on NetBSD, after you install that... Um, Copy user package share examples rc.d nginx. Um, this is the boot script. You need to copy that to etsy rc.d on your system. So you just want to make sure that that file ends up in your system's boot directory, okay? Although it, the package will not install that at NetBSD, it just doesn't work that way. So now that that is there, we need to go to user package etsy nginx. And you're going to see a conf file in here. What I prefer to do is make a backup of that file. And this is just how I prefer to do things. So from here, we're going to diff those two files. We want to make sure we have an accurate backup. We do. Let's remove the original. And now we can make a new one in that directory. So it's fairly simple. So from here, we want HTTP. And this section as a whole is everything to do with the HTTP functions in Nginx. Okay, so from here, um, we need to then say this is going to be a server instance that has to do with HTTP. So if we do server and then another bracket and then a, a group of them, inside of here, we need to tell it some things about what this server will do. We need to say listen. 80, so that means listen on port 80, and you want to end that with a semicolon. We need to tell it server underscore name. I'm going to put localhost for this example. If you have this, the IP address of this server, you want to map that to a um, fully qualified domain name you have, or maybe in your lab a domain name. Um, put that domain name there and, you know, point DNS to it, and you'll be good to go. But localhost is fine just for testing. And um, also... So also inside of this, and this is where it can get a little confusing, you have to put location slash, and then you need that to have its own quotes. So just like this. And then what this means is where the files are in the file system that Nginx is going to um, serve to clients connecting to the server. So you have to put root, and then you need to put a path where your website's files will be. So I'm going to use user package etc engine x test, and then add that with a semicolon. We're going to populate the directory in a second, so um, you can have each directory for like, if you're doing a vhost, so virtual hosting, where you serve a different set of files of a website for a specific domain 
like domain A has a certain set and domain B has another set, you can have separate directories based on the server name. So we need after this index, and this is the first file it's going to serve the client. This is index.html and index.htm. And end that with a semicolon there. And we're going to have uh, that in there. And um, it's very important at this point to go outside of the HTTP clause and add event events with its own um, set of brackets. Now we're going to put <clears throat> worker underscore connections 1024. This is just how many child process processes of Nginx will be started. And under that, we have to put user colon, I'm sorry, user nobody, and then a colon. This means what user ID and group ID um, Nginx will run with. And this is has to be, in this case, nobody, because if an attacker gets into Nginx, they only have the access, the access to the operating system, like the file system and all these things, with the permissions of the user nobody. So they couldn't execute other programs and do other things we wouldn't want. So it's important to put user nobody. Some websites will have a need to be to have elevated privileges, depending on what the website is doing, like if it's writing to a database or something. But for a simple website, for like a business or something, this is plenty fine to have it just like this. So let's uh, colon WQ and save this file here. Now, it's really important to do nginx-t at this point. You've got to make sure your syntax is okay. And we're good here. So this is what you want to see when you've at least got the, the base uh, plain text configuration running. Now, we're going to go and add some files for Nginx to actually give a web client. All right, so on to setting up the website's files here. We're going to go user package, Etsy, Nginx. And inside of here, we're going to make a directory called test. And let's go into that. I, I will add as a sidebar that you can put this, this directory um, wherever you want in your file system as long as Nginx has permissions to read those files. It just has to read them when clients request them. So that's all you have to make sure of, okay? And that's a very common error with the website. And when you're setting up a web server, it'll say permission denied. That means that the web server either can't read the file or you don't have access to uh, access that website. So that's one of the biggest uh, things you'll run into there. So once we're in there, though, we're going to make a very simple website. We're going to make a file index.html here. And let's make some tags, HTML, and then have another bracket, and a body tag. We're going to make a paragraph tag that says, this is a test of Nginx running on NetBSD. All right. Let's end that with a slash, with a slash before that character for the tag. Same thing with the body tag as well as HTML. Now let's save it. And at this point, make sure every group and all others can read the file. You can get fine-grained with this and make it so only Nginx specifically can read it and no one else can. But for the most part, in, unless it's holding sensitive information, like this was a database of a website or something, you want to make sure you have very strict permissions so nothing else on the system maliciously can read these files so that is something to think about in your you know in your design of things like this but we have our file and it has our website in there very basic one um <clears throat> now what we want to do is actually start nginx up so to do that we need to edit etsy rc conf and it's best to add nginx equals yes in all caps. You do want to make sure that's there. Otherwise, it won't start up when you restart. 
And then we want to do etsy rc.d nginx start. All right, and then let's do netstat dash an and pipe that to less. And it's listening on 80, and that's what we want to see. That's a proper operation. So now let's take a second and go over and point your web browser to whatever your web server's address is here. All right. So I will see you in a second and we'll see what our website looks like. All right. So a good thing about running your own web server is that you can see um, all the traffic and everything. So this is an advantage versus using something like Wix or anything like that where it abstracts all this away from you and you just worry about the actual HTML files and all of that that you put in there. This is actually what those sites do. They're putting them on a file system and a web server is doing just the same concept. This is like behind the curtain of things like that is what it is. So um, let's do TCP dump. And this is optional. You don't have to do this, but... It's interesting to be able to see the traffic. Um, now, what we want to do here is do this here. And actually, let me look just for the, the host of our web server. That'll make things a little clearer there. Now, if we go to 192.168.01, we can see that our website is loading up. And there is our website. Now, there's no encryption, but we see that it served our HTML file for us, all from our Nginx web server. If you look at the traffic, though, you'll be able to see that, um, you know, it is, in fact, plain text that it, it, if you go to the website, that basically it's all in plain text and you can see the data. This is the ASCII and this is the... Uh, hexadecimal, but that's really besides the point. The, this is called plain text information, and anyone anywhere in a network can see this, even if you have something happen to your computer, like ARP spoofing or, or anything like that. So, w what we're going to do next is set it up so we can actually protect against this and make it so my web browser and this server are the only two parties that know what is being said in this uh, connection. So I will see you in one second. Okay, so let's make it so that plain text becomes what's called cipher text when we communicate with our server. So what we want to do is go back to user package Etsy Nginx. We're going to make a directory now called SSL. And again, you can put them wherever you want in your system. Usually it's something like Etsy SSL, depending on your uh, operating system you're using. But let's go in there, and what we need to do is copy over an, another example of a config file for OpenSSL, because that is what creates uh, our public and private keys that allow this encryption to take place. So let's copy that over to Etsy. So you should have it here, and this is um, only for NetBSD. Other systems um, automatically copy it there. But now that we're in the directory, we want to use open SSL request, and then you want to use dash x509, and that's the type of uh, files we're generating, x509 certificates. Then we want to say new key, and this is an RSA key, and then we're going to say a colon, and then the next value is the bit length, so 2048. Now, the longer the bit length, the harder it is to brute force the encryption. So th this key is more secure the longer the bit length it is. 4096 is uh, actually the recommended. You don't want to go less than 2048, definitely. Some uh, devices don't allow that. But <clears throat> what you want to say is uh, you want to have w the key where you want that to go out to, the name of it. So this is ttech.key. This is the private key. This is the part of a public-private key pair that decrypts the information sent to this server specifically. And it's private. You need to keep it on the server and make sure nothing is, make sure it's never stolen. All right. If it's stolen, anybody that has this key pair, this part of it, can decrypt anything 
that is encrypted with the public side of it. And that is not a good thing. So we're going to say then that we want this to go out to TTAC CRT. This is the certificate. And after that, you want these are valid for a certain time. So we're going to have these valid for a year before it says they're invalid. At that point, you have to regenerate them. But then we'll say no DES as well. This is a, an encryption standard we don't want to use anymore. But this should generate our keys. And uh, one second, I got a little bit of a syntax wrong here. Key out, I am sorry. How did that happen? I thought I just fixed it. Hmm, key out. All right, you know what? I'm gonna show you how to fix this real quick. You have to copy OpenSSL CNF to Etsy OpenSSL. Um, and then there you go for that. I mean, welcome to system administration. This is really what happens. Um, so from there, once we have all of that, let's do US there. And um, we're gonna just fill in test, test. You put your domain name there if you're running this for a company. But now that they're in there, the TTAC CRT is the public key. This, the client uses plain text with this string to encrypt the data. The difference is it can be reversed. This is the part that encrypts the connection and then ttech.key is what decrypts that part of it. So it takes the plain text, the cipher text that was created by using the public key and the cipher, the plain text together, and this part of it takes that cipher text and combines it with this private part of it, and then that will decrypt it and give you plain text again. But this only occurs either at the server or at the client. It cannot occur anywhere in the middle of the network. So that's why we need this. Good security is, is what this is. So uh, now that we have those files though, we do need to tell Nginx how to use these files. And um, to do that, we actually have to have another server clause here inside of HTTP. So let's have another server clause. And this is where you kind of got to be careful of where you're where you're at with everything but now we'll say listen on 443 but now we say SSL secure sockets layer and um, after that we do server name and then again put your domain name here if you're using one and under that we're gonna have location slash and then under the location And have root user package Etsy nginx test and then index index HTML index htm and then end that. All right, now that we've specified our certificate uh, pair there, we're going to go ahead and put in um, SSL ciphers we want to accept. We're going to say I colon and then exclamation. We don't want to accept the null cipher colon and we don't want to accept the MD5 hash. All right. Now also we want to say SSL prefer server ciphers. You want to turn that on and we, we want the server end to be in charge of what ciphers will be used. So we don't want a client coming in and wanting to use insecure ciphers. So we should be good on that. So let's save this and do nginx uh, dash t. We're all good on the syntax there. So let's do etsy rc.d nginx restart. And now if we look again, um, it's on both ports, and that's what you want to see. 443 as well as 80. If you don't want it on 80, you can comment that out. But now, let's do that same TCP dump. Here, we're going to go back to the browser. And then let's go to that IP this time. Now, we have the not secure version, which we can see everything, of course, because it's not encrypted. So 
So it's serving both. But if, if we go to the HTTPS version, it says it's not private. This is because we've created a self-signed certificate. And essentially that just means that no trusted party that our applications actually have a, a copy of certificates in their application, um, it doesn't recognize the signature on our certificate, our public key. So that's why it says it is untrusted. But we are perfectly safe, so just proceed. And the cool thing is, now it is fully encrypted. So if we go to, even though it says not secure, it's because the certificate is invalid. But it's only invalid because it's not signed by anything else. You see how it's valid for a year, and you know its details. You'll be able to see the effect of that command we used. So that is a, how we have this set up. But if you look, there's no path. So that is uh, why it's claiming to be insecure. As far as the encryption goes, though, it uh, is encrypted. Whoops. It is encrypted completely. It's only about, it's the, it's the fact you don't know who you're connecting to for sure. All right, now you can see as well um, with our connection, we can't see anything in uh, TCP dump. It is encrypted because the only time it's going to be decrypted and turned into plain text is when Nginx handles it directly. So that is when it will be decrypted, not when it's going over one of our interfaces as a packet. So with all that, I do hope this video was helpful to you. I'd like to thank you for viewing. And uh, as always, it's Tyler with T-Tech and have a very nice day.